Aloha and welcome to the Hawaii Smooth Jazz Connection. I am your host, Gwendolyn Harris. My guest today, DeShannon Higa, a multi-talented perform performer, composer, and arranger. His professional experience expands over 30 years and has performed locally and globally with many renowned artists, including Al Jarreau, Jeff Lorber, Michael Feinstein, Burt Bacharach, the, the, uh, the original Elvis Presley band, Diana Krall, David Tao, and Wynton Marcellus. Wow. He has recorded music for film, radio, video games, studio, and live CDs. In late 2018, the Shannon released his first solo album, Words Cannot Express. The Shannon is currently nominated for two Nahuku Hano Hano Awards for Jazz Album of the Year and Most Promising Artist. Please welcome to the show, Mr. DeShannon Higa. Thank you for being here. Thank you for having you me. You have to excuse me because <laughs> my eyes and everything are all messed up right now. But thank you so much for being here. I've seen you around town. I've seen you play with different people. But this is my first. I've always wanted to meet you, and I'm getting to do it. Yeah, well, this is a good good place to do it, right yes. on your show. So yes. this is perfect. Well, let's get started. Tell me, when, was, when did you start playing music? I started at the age of nine while I was in the fourth grade. My family and I we were living in Hilo on the Big Island okay. at the time. And uh, over there, they, they start uh, kids very young uh, on, on instruments in, in a band. And uh, they, they actually start in the third grade. So when I joined the band in fourth grade, I was already a year behind, if you can mm -hmm. believe that. But uh, it was something that, that, that I, I really wanted to do. Uh, my brother was in the band already, and uh, I wanted to be like him. And so I, I joined the band. I, interestingly, though, I wanted to play drums. Oh. That was actually my first choice. I thought it was really cool. You know, what, what boy doesn't want to hit right. things, right? Right. So I thought that would be a really great instrument. But there were already too many drummers in the band at the time. Mm -hmm. So my band director said, you got to pick another instrument. So the next coolest instrument I thought was, oh, the trumpet, that's, that's, that's the one for me. And, it, and it, just, it just took, like right away, it was like love at first sight. So the trumpet, and you just stuck with it. You don't play any other instruments? Oh, no, I play other instruments. What do you I, play? I play? I play a bit of keyboards. Um, I do a bit of uh, hand percussion. And then I also do uh, pro programming and like oh. beat making. Stuff, oh, yeah. wow. Which is like a kind of a big thing. Yeah. Nowadays, right? yeah. That sounds interesting. Oh, it's fun. Oh, goodness. Now, you played many styles of music, ranging from jazz, Latin salsa, the modern electronica, mm -hmm. and hip-hop. Which style do you like the best? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> All of it, Gwen. I mean, I, it's, it's, it's really, I, you know, I guess if, if you were to look at my music collection and, mm -hmm. and see what I have the most of, I mean, I have all of that in my record collection, but... Probably the thing that I have the most of would, would be jazz. Okay. But, you know, jazz is increasingly becoming uh, broader in its, its definition. Mm -hmm. And so it, it bleeds over to all those different other subgenres or genres of, of music. And so, yeah, it, it really encompasses all of that. You just really. like it all. I, I do. So um, let me ask you this. So we have your regular jazz, mm -hmm. your your... How do you say it? What's regular, regular jazz? I don't know. That's what I'm saying. That's what I'm, that's what I'm trying to get at. So we have our, reg, you know, our jazz. I think and then we move anyone... into like smooth jazz. Okay. So yeah. what's the difference between the jazz and smooth jazz? Well, I think that like the jazz that you're talking about is what most people probably think about when, mm -hmm. you, when you say the word jazz. Yes. And it's, it's kind of related to uh, the jazz of like the, like the 40s, 50s, and 60s, mm -hmm. you know, like mm -hmm. some big band. Some, some uh, hip hop, or not hip hop, but bebop, yes. uh, the cool school, you know, that kind of range of jazz. So I think that's what most people think of. And then smooth jazz is actually a style that was born out of, of fusion and the uh, influence of, of rock and funk in, into okay. jazz. And so that, that came much later, like in the 70s. So I'm, I'm getting schooled. I'm getting schooled here. <laughs> now, you're the founder of many music groups. There's a few music groups that you are, mm -hmm. that you're a founder of, but I want you to just talk about the most recent, your most recent group, 
um, the Subtonic Orchestra, mm -hmm. because you guys were at Blue Note. Yes. Yeah. So talk to us about that, about okay. that group. Well, that group came out of my desire to uh, do music on a, on a bigger scale. You know, mm -hmm. most of the stuff I, I, I do live around town is, is a small group, you know, the quartet, quintet. Um, which is kind of like in, in, in terms of jazz, it's, it's, it's what's most uh, conventional and, and expected. And, um, and so that's what I've had to work with. But I, I heard other colors and other instruments I wanted to incorporate mm -hmm. in, into my music. And so I thought, okay, let, let me put together a group um, that's, that's bigger, that encompasses more of the sounds and colors that I wanted to, to uh, give to people. And so that's where Subtonic Orchestra came, came out of. And that really includes uh, the, besides your usual bass, drums, and, and keys, I added also a guitar, a percussionist, and then instead of me just being the only horn, I have uh, three other horns, a trombone and uh, two saxophones, and play other uh, woodwind instruments too. Because I was gonna ask you, how many people <laughs> are in that? Because just from the pictures, yeah. it, it looks, yeah. well, it's, <laughs> it looks Huge. It's it's large. It's 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 definitely on, on the bigger side. It's uh, it varies uh, from anywhere from like eight to like eleven or twelve people. And all of you could fit on the Blue Note stage. I didn't make it to that show because I was out of town. Mm. But all of you could make it on that stage. It's, it's amazing, isn't it? We fit. We fit. And I I wasn't sure we we're gonna fit. But uh, you remember that group Incognito? Yes. Yeah, one of my yes. favorite favorite bands. Yes. Anyway, so then when they played at the Blue Note and they had uh, I think they had like. 14 people. Yeah, it was massive. Yeah. And they, they all fit on the stage. So then when I saw that, I'm like, okay, I can fit you my can band. You can do it. I can do it. <laughs> you can do, I can it. do it. Now, most of you probably know that Mr. DeShannon Higa here, he's in the Royal Hawaiian Band. How did you, how did you come about that? How did you get... How did you get into that band? Well, it's... Because that's uh, the most... That's a Yeah. It's, big it's, band it's, hard, it's hard to get into, and it's the only... A band of its kind in the entire country. Mm -hmm. You know, it, it's a uh, it's a concert band, wind ensemble format, and um, and it has uh, roots to monarchy. Kamehameha the Third in 1836. Wow. Started the band. Yeah. So it's it's over you know over 180 years old, and um, it's it's now under uh, the city and county, and so it's a government job. It's steady work. These benefits, you know, it's, it's just a dream job for an instrumentalist like myself. And so it's very competitive and very difficult to get into. And, um, and I have the, I guess, the, the unique distinction of uh, being in the band twice. Mm. Yeah, I did it once in the 90s. Okay. And then there was a stint where I, uh, I got married and we lived in New York and I did other, other musical uh, endeavors and then we came back to Hawaii and there was an opening in the in the band again mm -hmm. and I auditioned for it and by God's grace I got in again so it's it's nice. it's an audition it's an, an audition that I had to go through now where can we see the band around Hawaii well we people most people don't know this but the Rohan band plays a lot like really? we, yeah they do over 350 concerts a year really yeah yeah, and nobody knows that. No, you know, nobody knows it. That's because we're we're always somewhere. You know, we, we we rarely hit the same place. You know, twice we do have our regular concerts at Iolani Palace on Fridays at noon, okay, and Kapiolani Bandstand in the park um, on Sundays at two o'clock. So those are those are our kind of our benchmark gigs. And these are every. This is every, every week. Every week. Every week. Every week. Okay. Yes. Right. But everything else in between, we're, we're just scattered all over the island. Oh, yeah. wow. So, so That's we're, something. We're now, I learned something right there. I learned something right there. Yeah. Now, you just talked about <clears throat> you in between time, in between the band mm -hmm. time, you went, you met your wife, right. you got married. Yes. And I understand that she is in the, in the musical field, too. She mm -hmm. was on Broadway. That's right. That's right. She was in the original cast of Miss Saigon. Oh, yeah, that, that opened on Broadway in the, in the 90s. Yeah, she was a part of that. I didn't know her then. I only met her much later in the late 90s after she had moved to Hawaii. Yeah, I was playing in a swing band 
You had Zanuck Lindsay. Yes, right, right. I did. I so, did a few so, weeks ago. So we were in a band called Hula Joe and the Hot Jumpers. Okay. Th this this was in the, the heyday of the neo swing movement. You know, uh -huh. everybody were they were doing all this the swing dancing, right? It was a kind of a uh, re, um, uh, revival mm -hmm. of, of swing music. Mm -hmm. And so we we started a band along with uh, some other uh, cats that you know friends, and um, we used to play at just down the street at Aloha Tower. Uh, it used to be called the Pier Bar, later it became Capono's, right, right there on, on the water. Uh -huh. And so we, we would play there, I think it was like twice, twice a month. And people would just come out in droves and just, just to dance. And Rocky, my wife, um, I hadn't met her at the time, but she was an avid dancer. She just loved to dance. Mm -hmm. And so she would come out um, <coughs> just to swing dance. Mm. And, uh, and so I met her in, in one of those times that when we were performing. And uh, our drummer um, knew her, and he introduced us. And, and so we just kind of hit it off, and we just became fast friends. Now, I've seen her perform with you before. Cause she, <laughs> she sings, so I've seen her oh, yeah. perform with you before. Yeah, she's quite the singer. I mean, she's, we, we perform regularly together. Um, she, she sings with my subtonic orchestra, uh, sometimes with my smaller group quad pod. And then she, she has her own gigs, too, that sometimes I'll, I'll play on, uh, on her gigs. Um, but these days, she's doing a lot of teaching. Like, she mm -hmm. has, like, I don't know, 30, 30 kids or something that she teaches. Wow. Yeah. So she's, she's kind of taking on more of that kind of mentor, educator role. And she's doing a wonderful job. I, she's she's uh, very, very talented in uh, not just singing and dancing, but in teaching also. Now, do you teach? I, I have. Mm -hmm. I'm currently not teaching because my schedule with performing and writing and arranging and composing it just kind of takes up a lot of my time okay you know and then I'll, along with that just other uh, church activities that that i'm involved in mm -hmm. um that, that that with music as well it, it takes up a lot of time oh okay well we have to go on a quick break and we will be right back so don't go away hi i'm rusty komori host of beyond the lines on think tech hawaii my show is based on my book also titled beyond the lines and it's about creating a superior culture of excellence, leadership, and finding greatness. I interview guests who are successful in business, sports, and life, which is sure to inspire you in finding your greatness. Join me every Monday as we go beyond the lines at 11 a.m. Aloha. <laughs> Aloha. I'm Lauren Pear, a host here at Think Tech Hawaii a digital media company serving the people of Hawaii. We provide a video platform for citizen journalists to raise public awareness in Hawaii. We are a Hawaii nonprofit that depends on the generosity of its supporters to keep on going. We'd be grateful if you'd go to thinktechhawaii.com and make a donation to support us now. Thanks so much. Aloha and welcome back to the Hawaii Smooth Jazz Connection. My guest today, and I'm so glad he's here, is Mr. DeShannon Higa. Welcome back. Thank you. Now, we were talking earlier in the show. We were talking about all types of things. Um, but I'm going to ask you, who would you like to collaborate with? Well, if I'm going to think like globally, mm -hmm. um, one of the names, I mean, there's a whole bunch of names, but one that comes to the top actually is, uh, is Bruno, Bruno mm. Mars, you know, he's, he had local ties, right? Mm -hmm. He's from, he's from Hawaii. Right. That he, he, he made it big. He's, he's an international superstar, but I, I just like him as a singer, as, as a composer, as a writer, as mm -hmm. a performer, as a musician. Mm -hmm. I think he's one of the few real, um, gems in the music industry in that He's a real musician, mm -hmm. and and real musicians recognize other real musicians, and and he's definitely one. And so I think it would be really fun and neat to collaborate with him on some on some stuff. And it's I would amazing. like to see that too. That would be that would be amazing. That would be amazing. Well, since you are here, mm. why don't you just give us a little taste? Can you play for us today? Okay. Well, one of the things that I really like to do is <laughs> is fuse the. Uh, the genres of, of jazz mm -hmm. and, and hip-hop together. Oh, you know? okay. 
And so I'm going to need a little bit of help, though. Uh-oh. See, okay? you didn't tell me, did you? Oh, yeah. But it's, it's easy. Okay. It's, it's really easy. All I need you to do is... Uh-huh. Okay. Mm -hmm. You know, I can, can do, do that? that. I can do that. Mm -hmm. That's all. Okay. I need you to do. viewers can come we can come see you yeah well I'm, see I'm, I'm working on right now um, doing a residency at the blue note oh yeah and so you My know the, 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 the blue note has has become a, a mainstay of the Hawaii music scene mm -hmm. and it's it's one of the go-to spots if you're a musician and you, you want to play in a in a real music club or a real audience that's not just there to, to eat or right. have drinks, but they're there for the music. Yes. And so it's a great venue for, for, for live music performance. And so I was really honored that they asked me to, to do something regularly for them. So I'm in the process of, of putting some material and, and things together in the subtonic orchestra format, maybe in the quad pod format, my smaller format, nice. but basically doing something <laughs> with those groups um, that's, that's fresh and new every time. Nice. You know, so yeah, that, that's kind of my big project right now. Oh, well, that's awesome. That is awesome. I can't wait because, yeah, you know, I'll be you. there. You know I will be there. Now, you released your, your, your CD, Words Cannot Express. Mm -hmm. How did you come up? And it just came out maybe about a couple months ago. Yeah. Mm -hmm. How did you come up with the title of that? <laughs> that, was, that was easy. When, <laughs> that was easy because, uh, you know, as, as an instrumentalist, you know, the, the, the trumpet is, is my voice, mm -hmm. right? And, of course, it, it, there's no words to, to what I play, mm -hmm. right? And so it's, it's, it's all instrumental music, but it expresses and it communicates so much. As, as an instrumentalist, there's a lot that I want to say in the instrument that doesn't necessarily translate to words because it's something that, it's a heart language mm -hmm. that, that right. people understand. Right. They, they don't have to have words to be able to understand what I'm trying to communicate. You know, if it's, if it's love, if it's, if it's passion, if it's anger, or if it's, you know, any, any, any kind of emotion, I right. can communicate it through the horn and people can understand. Right. You know, so, and that's why it, it, it transcends words. And so coming up with a title for the album is like, well, I, I can't think of a better title than Words Cannot Express for an instrumental album that this is. Well, I can tell you, I, I've heard it and I love it. And my favorite song on there is Bebop. Boop, beep. Boop, beep, beep, boop, boop beep, 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 boop. <laughs> <laughs> I love that song. I love that song. And I played it on my radio show, but I just love it. I love it. Thank you. I think I'm a you know, you know how I got that title? How, how'd you get that title? Okay, because, you know, you've heard of Bebop. Yes. Right? <laughs> right. Well, this is kind of like 
uh, bebop backwards. Mm -hmm. You know, because it's like it's like modern bebop um, with a hip hop influence. So mm -hmm. it's kind of like kind of like taking bebop and like turning it on its head, mm -hmm. right? So I just kind of move the you know put the two words backwards, and you get boop beep. It's awesome. If you have not bought that CD yet, you need to buy it. You need to buy it. it. It's titled Words Cannot Express by Mr. DeShannon Higa. It's, it's an awesome CD. I played it over and over and over. Now, I asked this question of all of my guests, mm -hmm. and it has to do with music in the schools, because I want to see what everybody's, what mm. they're, what, what, you know, what they have to say. So as you know, they're gradually taking the music out the schools. You know how we used to have it? You go yes. back, because that's, how I, that's how I played. That's mm -hmm. how I learned. What can we do, if we can do anything, you know, to keep it, to keep it in the schools? Because I think our kids need this. Mm -hmm. um, they need, you know, kids are very um, uh, susceptible to suggestion, to influence. You know, they're, they're an open book, mm -hmm. right? And so you can write anything you want in them and, 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 they'll, and they'll take it. And so I think it's real important for, in order for them to value the arts and music. They need to see that the people that they look up to value arts and music, mm. right? So it's, it's, it's by example, first of all, right. right? By example, so the adults need to embrace art and music and creativity and beauty of all kinds, mm -hmm. you know, not, not just in jazz, but, 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 but in everything, right? And then educate the kids, grow, you know, bring them up to appreciate and, and see the beauty in those things as well, you right. know? Show, right. them, show them that's how you know family values get passed down yes. this this is important and you need to yes. see how important this is so you, you teach the kids that that this is important you do it by example and then you do it by education yeah that's true that is so true yeah. we can't we can't just have this the schools teach it it has to come from the home, home. Uh, a, a mentor of some kind mm -hmm. you know a big brother a big sister somebody that the kids look up to, to say look th this is important you need to check this out. You need to dig this. You know, and a lot of times, the, the way that musicians become musicians or artists become artists is that something they saw or mm -hmm. heard sparked that, that, that desire in them. Mm -hmm. you know, they were inspired by, by a great work. Mm -hmm. And that continues today. You know, the, the kids coming up today, they're no different. Right. You know, they need to be inspired by something. You know, so whether it be a, a, a great work of, of art, a um, piece of music, uh, a dance, mm -hmm. anything, you know, anything that will spark that creativity. Now, who inspired you? We're talking about mentors. I know you said mm -hmm. earlier you saw your, your brother, mm -hmm. but is there anybody else that might have inspired you in the, in the music? Yeah, well, there's a lot of influence, but I, I think if, if I have to go back to, to the beginning, um, and this, this is what we're talking about with, you know, mm -hmm. with the mentors. Yes. Um, I was playing in a little church orchestra I was in the sixth grade at the time, and um, there was a trombone player uh, who, who laid a tape on me, and he was in his 20s, and he says, here, check, check this cassette tape, and back then it was cassette tapes, and I put that on, and it was a Maynard Ferguson mm. tape, right, but from the 60s, 1961 and 63, and I had never heard trumpet playing like that in my life. Because he's just high notes, screaming right. player, super dynamic. And I'd, I'd never heard that. And it just, yeah, that captured my heart. You know, I, I heard you. that and I'm like, oh, wow. Is that what a trumpet can sound like? I want to do that. And you're I doing wanna, it. I want to be like that. And you're doing well, it. Well, it, 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 uh, it set me on, on a track for the rest of my life. And, and uh, it, it, it made me improve. It made me practice hard. Uh, I injured myself a lot in the process of trying to do what I heard, uh, but it was it was a great learning experience, and and that was the thing that drove me. And it was because somebody took the time to to share music with me and inspire me. Nice, nice. Now, as you know, um, we have musicians that some make it and some don't mm -hmm. in this industry, right. in the music industry. What is your advice that you could give a new or upcoming artist in this industry? Oh, and that's, that's really tough. I mean, <laughs> I, you know, I, I would love to be 
all positive and say, mm -hmm. you can do whatever you set your mm -hmm. mind to do. And that's generally true. You know, I, I, it's, you, you can't put a, a cap uh, or ceiling on, on desire and determination. If somebody wants something bad enough, ain't nobody's going to tell them otherwise. And, and I'm certainly am not going to tell them otherwise. Mm -hmm. you know, so there's a lot to be said about the inner drive and, and desire um, and tenacity for that. Now, having said that, there's also the, the, the flip side of that mm -hmm. is that some people need, <clears throat> they have all ambition in the world, but they need a heavy dose of reality too. Mm -hmm. you know? if, if someone, uh, you know, if they want to be a painter or something, you know, but they're colorblind. Mm -hmm. That's a heavy obstacle. <clears throat> you have to figure out a lot of stuff to, you know, if, if, you're, if you're tone deaf and you want to become a musician, that's a, that's a giant obstacle, you know. Right. Um, things like that. So, so you need to kind of work within what, what, what you're given, you know, and, and, and go from there. You have to weigh what you want in life, uh, your ambition, with, with the reality, too. You know, and based on those two things, you, you make your decision. Nice. That, that, that's, very, that's great advice. I, I, I sure I hope so. <laughs> that's great advice. Now, I know you talked about the upcoming Blue Note mm -hmm. project. Is there anything else that we can be looking for from the trumpet master, Mr. Well, Shannon Higa? Well, as, as you know, <laughs> we have the big... Uh, Nahoku Hano Hano Awards right. coming up. You on, two, you're on you're nominated for two? Yes, I am. Mm -hmm. uh, for Jazz Album of the Year and also for uh, uh, Upcoming Artist, mm -hmm. Promising Artist. So, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm a little bit nervous about it. I'm trying not to think about it. Uh, but things are definitely ramping up towards it. And uh, I have a lot of supporters, a lot of friends um, who are rooting for me and they'll be there at, at the show. And, and uh, yeah, so we're just, we're, we're hoping for the best. And, and, you know, I really hope that, that should I, I win uh, one or both awards, that it would just give more fuel to um, not just me, but artists like me who want to do mm -hmm. similar things, you know, and, and pursue music and pursue their art um, and it'll, it'll definitely put the wind in my sails for the next project. <laughs> well, you know, I'm definitely going to be rooting for you, and our viewers are going to be rooting for you, and I'm, I'm going to try and make it to the new hookahs. I was there last year. I'm going to try this year um, to come. But thank you so much for joining my me on this show. This has been awesome. Next time we're going to have like a little setup. We're going to we have like a little setup here. We're going to have little drinks here. Oh, okay. Yeah, okay. yeah. I was, I was kind of we, waiting for yeah, that. Yeah, we're going to have saying. little drinks. We had to get the bartender, you know, <laughs> to come on out. You know, can I have my Mai Tai, please? You that's know, right, <laughs> anyway, right. but next time we will do that. But thank you again for coming and joining us on the show. Thank you, Gwen. Thank you, everyone, for tuning in to the Hawaii Smooth Jazz Connection. Tune in next week. Until then, aloha and God bless. <laughs>